And we think of those things, we do not think of the ways of the world. Paul emphasizes the idea of having the mind of Christ, that this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians, the second chapter, the fifth verse. It is a new mind. We as Christians don't look at people in hate. We don't look at people in lust. We don't look at people in a negative way. We allow our thoughts to be pure and honest before God. Then again, we have a new relationship with God. I, I, I think of Jews, and I've worked with Jews, and I uh, had a lot of contact with Jews in the various work jobs I had around Huntington. So I, I think I'm speaking from a little bit of experience, but they believe in a God of hate. They fear the judgment of God. I do too. I have a fear. But the love that I have for God is a greater than the fear. I, I know that God was true to his promises and he's promised me that if I keep myself pure and holy before him and I'm defiled by the world, that I have a relationship with him. I, I think of my dad. My dad was a very strict disciplinarian. I can't say that word. Marilyn, you can't say doxology. I can't say this plenary. <laughs> but I, I think about that. I mean, uh, whenever I did something bad, oh, I had to face my dad. My dad had a philosophy. He felt that the applied knowledge of the seed of learning was what needs to be done, a good spanking, in other words. And my kids will tell you I did the same thing. Ruth's shaking her head back there, and I can hear it all the way up here. <clears throat> So when I did something bad, my dad would give us a spanking. And he would spank us until we cried. And I was too stubborn to cry. My brother would start crying the minute he got the first whip. And I always thought worse punishment. I don't know how many times my mom would say, Phil, that's enough. My dad's name was Phil too. I know God will judge. I know the Bible says, if, right, uh, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly be? But I also know God's blessings, His forgiveness, His love. There are several scriptures I want to read. First John, the third chapter, verses 1 through 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the Son of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew Him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that, that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, and we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. I keep hearing that I wonder if this trump of God I'm waiting for the rest of it. <laughs> Romans 8, 15 says, For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children that heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if so be that ye suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. What do you think just for a moment? If you are the sons of God and the daughters of God, I'm going to add that. If you are a joint heir with Christ, as Romans the 8th chapter brings out. And Christ is heir of all things. And we're a joint heir with Christ. What do we need? Think of that power. Think of that thought that we are the sons of God. We are the children of God. And we as Christians, we have the idea of being a joint heir. What God has is going to be bestowed upon us in abundance. I understand what Jesus meant when he said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it abundantly. John 10, chapter. 
And then again as we go on, we have a new goals, new purpose in life, new priorities. All things become new and therefore our purpose in life has become different. Our goals have become different. I got to be in Charles Friday. I went to Charlie Morris's funeral. And one of the things that was being done, he was being praised for all things that he did in the church. I was telling Lucas about this. Lucas used to work with Charlie. But before I became your minister, I was talking to Charlie one, one day at church. And I said, Charlie, how nice would it be if outside the church they took a small part of the, uh, the decorations, the landscape, and set it aside and made a garden there that people can give a rose bush or something in memory of a loved one. He liked the idea. And he went and started a rose bush in this absolutely absolutely beautiful over the years he's done a good job with it the preacher Russell Jordan the preacher was preaching he says and Charlie came up with an idea of making this rose bush and he gave him all the praise now, I'm going to tell you something I don't care if Charlie got the praise he can have all the praise as long as God gets the glory I don't know how many times I've let up take the praise for things I thought of. In fact, uh, Marilyn was talking earlier about why good things happen to bad people. And I happened to think of a lecture series that I prepared one time, which was, I called If God Loves Me. Uh, if God Loves Me, Why Do I Have So Many Problems? I don't know how many preachers have gotten a hold of that and use it as their own. And I had one preacher apologize to me. I said, hey, I don't care. The message is getting out and let God be glorified. I wish I could find my copy. I wish I could find my copy. I'll give it to me. But just think for a moment. Our goals have changed. Uh, I, I like to look at the third chapter. That when Paul talks about his becoming Christian, he says, when he, uh, he writes in the third, 13 and 14 verses, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Forget those things which are behind. Press on to serve Jesus Christ. And last, last, we have a new hope and destiny. This new life that we have, the abundant life, the, 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 because of the birth of Jesus Christ, because of his death, because of his resurrection, because of what he's done, we have a new hope. I like what how Paul writes and ties in the second chapter 11 verse. But the grace of God that hath bring salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great god and our savior jesus christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from the iniquity and purify him made <coughs> purify himself a peculiar people zealous of good works i want you to think just for a moment what is your greatest hope being a Christian. Mine is to hear the words, well done, a good and faithful servant. What about you? Yes, we think of the birth of a child, the changes that are made as a result of that birth, the things that are different. things that have transpired in your life as a result of it. Because of the birth of the child Jesus Christ as a babe of nature. 
his ultimate death on Calvary some 30 some years later. His resurrection. The establishment of the church in order to be able to worship him in spirit and truth. What are the changes in your life as a result? The changes ought to be plenty. I don't know what happened this morning. For the first time since I've been here, I've had more time to preach than I normally did. I guess it's because Mike didn't have too many people to pray for. <laughs> I guess that's what it was. But you're getting out a little bit early today. After we sing our invitation hymn and we have our benediction and prayer, you'll still have about five minutes. I think it'd be nice if we just stood around and shared together in love, Christian love. But if you're not a Christian, if this new life does not become your life, we encourage you to come as we stand as we sing. What is it? Softly, softly and tenderly. Softly and